Hi, I'm Trev Lucas Spalu. You see me in such fine quality, epic educational films such as Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Chemistry, Part 4. And I'm a legend in my own mind, an autobiography of Trev Lucas Spalu. Okay. This is talking about naming molecular compounds. We have talked about naming binary ionic compounds. We've talked about naming compounds that have Roman numerals in them, like iron 2 oxide versus iron 3 oxide. We've talked about those. We've talked about compounds that have polyatomic ions in them. Now, now we're looking at molecular compounds. What's the difference? Well, with molecular compounds, you're really looking at a nonmetal with a nonmetal. Whereas binary ionic compounds, you had a metal with a nonmetal, like sodium chloride, silver, bromide, gold, two bromide. Those are metal and nonmetal. Here, these are nonmetals, and the naming rules are a little bit different. So, the first thing you need to be aware of are your prefixes. Now, your prefixes start out at mono, goes to deca. So, let's check this out. Mono meaning one, di meaning two, tri meaning three. Tetra meaning four, penta meaning five, hexa meaning six, hepta is seven, octa is eight, nana is nine, deca is ten. All those are prefixes that are used in naming molecular compounds. Remember, molecular compounds have no metals. It's a nonmetal with a nonmetal. Let's do a few examples. So here we have BCl3. Now what does that mean? These formulas are already balanced. We're only interested in naming them molecular compounds. Well, boron and chlorine are nonmetals. Okay? So that means we can use the naming convention with prefixes and suffixes on here. Let's look at it. We have boron and chlorine. But the chlorine picked up an electron, so it becomes a chloride. But because boron is a nonmetal and chlorine is a nonmetal, but it became a chloride when we picked it up, we say boron trichloride. That's the name of BCl3. Notice we don't put a mono in front of the boron here because you don't need to. If there's already a boron there, that tells us that there's one of it already. Trichloride, that tells me there's three chlorides that are connected to it. Okay? So that's one example there. Let's go for another one. Let's go for SF6. Now, S you probably recognize as sulfur. I dropped my mark. So, but are we going to say monosulfur? No, we don't. Because remember, there's only one sulfur. You never put mono in the front, ever. Okay? So we're going to say sulfur. Now notice we've got six of these atoms here. Are they fluorines? Well, no, because they picked up an electron, they become fluorides. So it's sulfur fluoride, but we've got six of these. So that's when we look at our prefix and we see, ah, hexa. So sulfur hexa So this is another example. Sulfur's a nonmetal. Fluoride's a nonmetal. There's six fluorides, so it's hexa because that's the prefix for six. 
right? Dihydrogen monoxide. Two hydrogens to one oxygen. Okay? All right, let's move on to something else. Let's go for P2O5. Now, P is for phosphorus. Is phosphorus a metal? No, it's not. Is oxygen a metal? Nope, it's not. So that's when we use the molecular naming. So P2O5, well, there's two P's, so I'm gonna look at my prefix here, and ah, here it is, di. So it's gonna be di phosphorus. And really, that P should not be capitalized. Okay, there's our A. So diphosphorus. Now we have oxide, but here's the thing. There's five of these oxides, so it's going to be penta. It's not going to say penta oxide. It's going to say pentoxide. Okay, so pentoxide. Now you'd say, but wait, how in the world would I know something like this? It's how it sounds, more than anything else. So that's diphosphorus pentoxide. Now let's say instead of the P2, we had a P3. So P3O5, what would be the name? Again, it's already two nonmetals together, so that's going to be triphosphorus pentoxide, okay? So again, this is naming molecular compounds. They have both have to be nonmetals. You'd say, but wait, what's a nonmetal? Metals would include things like copper and silver and mercury and sodium, okay? Look up your notes on your periodic table, okay? some other ones. Hmm. Okay, let's try P4O10. That's a big one. Okay, well P4O10, again, they're both nonmetals. We have tetraphosphorus, so tetraphosphorus, and then it says decoxide. It's not Deca oxide, it's decoxide. Because it tells us four phosphorus, ten oxygens. Okay, or oxides, I should say. Because it's not oxygen, it became an oxide. Why? Because it picked up the electron from the phosphorus. Whoops. Yeah. Okay. Now somebody may be saying, well, you know, what about some other ones, ones that we're really familiar with? You're right. So let's look at it. CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay, this is a classic. This is a molecular name. Carbon and oxygen are both nonmetals. So that's why we can make them molecular. Now, how about CO? Now notice we never use mono in front of the first part. You never hear monocarbon dioxide or monocarbon monoxide. You never hear that. Okay? So in this case, it's carbon monoxide. So that's what we have here. For CO2, carbon dioxide, CO, carbon monoxide. Okay, I think... Let's see, is there anything else on here that I would worry about? Here's one. Disulfur decafluoride. Now, they gave us a molecule, a molecule name. They want the molecular formula for it. Okay, 
Well, they already tell me I've got a sulfur and I've got fluorides running loose. Disulfur, so that's going to be two S's. Deca meaning 10, so S2F10. Now we have carbon tetrachloride. We have one carbon. Again, they're both nonmetals. So I got CCL4. That's carbon tetrachloride. Over here we have oxygen difluoride. So it's going to be OF2. Okay. Dinitrogen trioxide. Ooh. Again, they're both nonmetals. So dinitrogen, N2O3. Okay. Tetraphosphorus heptasulfide. Ooh. Tetraphosphorus. Well, I know it's a phosphorus. And hepta, and there's a P and an S in there. Again, they're not metals. So tetra meaning four, so P4. Hepta meaning seven, so P4, S7. That's tetra phosphorus hepta sulfide. Hey, I hope this benefited you, okay? This is molecular formula, which is not the same as binary ionic formulas like sodium chloride or iron two chloride. Okay? This is molecular formula where the two parts are not metals. That's the key. Okay? All right. This is Trev Luca Spawoon signing off and may the farce be with you.